is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to take a look at the first U.S. Nokia Windows phone, the Lumia 710, available on T-Mobile. It's only 49 bucks, and it's really a great phone for the price. So this is the Nokia Lumia 710. This is the first Windows phone by Nokia that's available in the U.S. And no, it's not the Nokia Lumia 800, that really nice high-end polycarbonate phone that looks really cool. But hey, for 49 bucks, this is a really nice Windows phone. This runs Windows Phone 7.5 Mango, which is the second generation version of the operating system. It has a 3.7 inch LCD capacitive touch screen and it has Nokia's clear black technology. It's a very nice looking display. My only complaint is viewing angles are not super wide. They're pretty good, but you know, we're not talking 180 degrees here. And if you use it in bright sunlight, it does fade out a bit. But otherwise, indoors or if you're not standing right out there in the sunshine, it looks really nice, sharp, and clear and colorful. And the phone is fast thanks to the 1.4 gigahertz single core Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU. That's about the fastest CPU you'll find in a Windows phone right now and that's pretty neat for a, basically what is a budget phone selling for 49 bucks with contract. As always Windows Phone Mango doesn't support dual core CPUs yet because Microsoft wanted to keep the phones affordable and because they highly optimize the operating system for that particular second generation Snapdragon CPU so it actually runs really really quick certainly as quick as the iPhone and quicker than Android which is sometimes prone to lag even with fancy dual core CPUs phone has the usual Windows buttons up front here and these are mechanical buttons which is nice for tactile feel but honestly they're kinda of hard to press it's this kind of clear slippery plastic here and given the resistance to being pressed and the slipperiness well they're a little bit of annoying phones available in black or in white and you can see here it has a rubbery kind of soft touch finish not a particularly skinny phone it's 0.49 inches so we're talking a half inch phone here but the good thing is the back is removable so you can access the battery unlike the Lumia 800 very thin phones sometimes have non removable batteries you get a 5 megapixel camera on the back you know Nokia they make pretty good cameras so this actually takes nice shots and it can shoot 720p video you got an LED flash fairly large speaker and grill here with very good sound out pretty loud surprisingly loud in fact a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack up top, power button, micro USB port for syncing. You can either sync this with Zoom Desktop to get your media on here or use the Windows Phone Connector and Mac OS and that'll sync with iTunes playlists for non-DRM content. Nothing on this side here except for a grab point to remove the back cover. Clean here, you've got a little charm holder mount dedicated camera button, that's a requirement for Windows Phone and that's your volume rocker right there. We yank off that back cover which comes off pretty easily you've got the 1300 milliamp battery right here and there's your micro SIM card slot this uses a micro SIM just like the Lumia 800 and the iPhone 4 and 4S there is no micro SD card slot that's quite a challenge with Windows Phones they very rarely have one because it formats SD cards and internal memory together in one big partition for DRM reasons and that causes a lot of problems if you take the card out so manufacturers just are not putting those in there the phone has 8 gigs of internal storage with about 5.3 gigs free and that's one of the drawbacks of a low-end phone you don't get 16 gigs of storage like you do with higher-end phones and given the very capable Zune music and video player here and the syncing capabilities you know if you're really into music it's pretty easy to fill up all that storage the Lumia 710 has 512 megs of RAM. Again, that's a Windows Phone mandated standard. There's a whole lot of standards that are set by Microsoft. It has 800 by 480 pixel display. Again, that's a Windows Phone requirement. It has Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR with stereo out capability. And it has a GPS that works with Bing Maps and with Nokia Drive, which is included. That's their little value added. And Nokia Drive is pretty cool because, well, it's a pretty decent mapping and navigation solution, but also it supports storing maps offline. You just pick your state and you can download the maps. And map sizes aren't too bad. For example, the state of Texas, which is a pretty darn big state, is a 155 meg map. Not too bad, bad at all. And you can choose from a variety of languages as well for your spoken directions. Nokia Drive is pretty much it right now for Nokia's value-added applications. You know, HTC and Samsung, they have their own hubs and several apps that they've made, like image editors and stuff like that. Not seeing that yet on the Nokia. Speaking of HTC, this gives the Radar on T-Mobile a lot of competition, too. The Radar is 99 bucks. actually the Radar 4G, and that's made by HTC, and it's a pretty nice 
phone too with 8 gigs of storage, but it only has a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon CPU and well, I think this has just a more elegant design. Of course this is kind of the more Euro look to it with the complex curves and that distinct Nokia look really. It looks like a Nokia phone. And the HTC is a little bit more like an American car with that kind of shiny grill and, and a little bit more of a bulky design, but honestly this is half the price so Radar has some tough competition. Nokia is really doing well with their entry-level phone. And we've got the People Hub here, which if I had synced contacts, I'd see all their little photos flipping back and forth as that tile animates. And you have access to your social networking status updates, uh, Facebook, Twitter, that kind of thing, and you can see stuff that people have been updating to who are in your contacts list. Of course, Hotmail is on board here. And by the way, if you're not really into Hotmail and or any of these live tiles here, you just press and hold and you can remove them. That's how Windows Phone works. And no bloatware allowed is pretty much the rule. Anything that gets added by the carrier after the fact is removable with Windows Phone. You've got a dialer here, and you can see how the live tile will keep you informed of things. Like I've got two text messages right here, and I've got a voicemail waiting in my phone section. Phone runs the standard Windows dialer, which is pretty minimalist looking, and you have access to your call history, contacts, and all that kind of thing. And as you'd expect from a Nokia phone, call quality is excellent for both incoming and outgoing voice, and reception is quite good as well. Data throughput has been good as well for us when downloading email, accessing websites, and all that kind of thing, and downloading apps. So if you've, you've got anything that's 20 megs or bigger, it's going to make you use Wi-Fi to do that. That's an OS-wide rule. Take a look at IE9 Mobile, which is a decent web browser. It's still not quite up there with the iOS web browser or Android's WebKit browser, to be honest, but it does a reasonably good job. Sometimes it messes up a little bit on advanced CSS and some layouts, but right now you can see we're on the LA Times website. It's a full website. And it's looking quite good. And you get support for things like pinch zooming, or tap zooming to flow things in, in a readable format. It works well. There is no Adobe Flash here. That's still something that is in the purview only of Android phones for as long as it continues to last, since it seems like mobile platforms are now moving to HTML5, since Adobe is not going to be evolving mobile Flash anymore. We've got the Weather Channel live tile loaded here too and you can see that it's flipped over to the map for the radar view and now we've got the weather forecast going so a lot of times are pretty cool calendar right here if I had any appointments coming up it would let me know if you tap on that it takes you right into calendar marketplaces where you're going to get your applications and if there are any updates available there will be a numerical counter there to tell me that and then we've got the neat local scout here which tells me about things to do near me like go to movies, uh, find places to eat and all that kind of thing it's based on Bing Maps. You know, Bing Maps is pretty good, actually, especially when it comes to POIs, gas price finding, stuff like that. Good stuff. The phone has Bing services, which, which isn't just mapping. All the mapping and navigation works just fine on the phone, but it also has neat stuff like what's near me. As I mentioned, it has local scout for places to eat and things to do. You can see right here, attractions, all that kind of stuff. Shopping that's nearby, all that neat stuff. It's really a very nice service, and it doesn't send me pining for Google quite so much as I thought. So let's take a look at the Music Hub. Our music and video tile right here. And there's some stuff that I've loaded. I've got a video that I've side loaded over here and I've got a couple of albums. And that also hooks into apps so I can get right into apps if I want. And this also supports FM radio. You do have to attach the headphones because they act as the antenna. And headphones, by the way, are not included for your 50 bucks. Supports podcasts as well. And we'll listen to the incredibly loud speaker, really. And yes, it does play in the background, too. You can also play videos, not just those gotten from the Zune service, but anything that you want to sideload. And the Zune desktop software will handle conversion, as will the Mac. Here's an HD video we converted and downloaded via sideloading. Great audio and really, really sharp picture. Now you're not just limited to Zoom content or anything you sideload. You can stream things like Netflix, for example, which is a staple for Windows Phone. By the way, this streams just fine over T-Mobile's 4G HSPA Plus network, and this has HSPA Plus 14.4 megabit per second, which is what 
Windows Phone supports. It does not yet support LTE. Now that T-Mobile has LTE anyway. We're going to test out a little Star Trek movie here. So that streams good. Looks nice and sharp. Good audio quality. And we've also got T-Mobile TV here. It's a $10 a month streaming service that's powered by Moby TV. It has on-demand content and live content. And you get a 30-day free trial to check it out with the phone. Nice, easy to understand interface. And we'll just check out ESPN. So that's pretty sharp and clear. It takes a little bit to buffer up and then it looks and sounds pretty good and fills the screen nicely. So any additional applications you have that you haven't put up here as a live tile are available here in a scrolling list. And you can see there's quite a good selection. You've got Flickster, IMDB, Food Spotting. Of course Bing Maps is pre-installed. You get MS Office Suite since this is a Microsoft product and MS Exchange support. It also syncs to Google Contacts, Google Calendar, that kind of stuff. You have threaded messaging on board. Obviously, we've downloaded Netflix. We've got the Weather Channel, many weather sources available, a standalone YouTube player, and if you want to get more apps, you hit the market. And that's what the market looks like, and it's segregated into apps, games, music, and podcasts, and they suggested apps. Got Epicurious on board and Gadget, all sorts of stuff, and many, many games because this has Xbox Live. We've got Spotify, Slacker, Radio, Twitter, all sorts of apps, and there are about 50,000 applications now available on the Windows Phone Marketplace, and it's still growing pretty quickly, so it's promising stuff. Now we'll take a look at Xbox Live, which has indeed Xbox Live integration. You can bring your avatar over, for example, see requests from your friends. There's my cute little avatar. And you can download games. You can get trials of all games, which is nice. And they're, they're playable for a good several minutes, so you can get an idea if they're any good before you buy them. And most games, quality games, run between $2.99 and $4.99. And the overall price range is $0.99 cents to about $6.99. So we'll just check out demo game right now. So that's Tentacles for Windows Phone. Of course, for you more action-minded people, there are games like Need for Speed Shift and lots of action games and Assassin's Creed, all that kind of stuff. Definitely a capable gamer, though. The 1.4 gigahertz CPU does the trick. Battery life on the phone is pretty good. It's a 1300 milliamp battery, as we saw, and it, it easily lasts us through the day with moderate use. If you're going to use the GPS constantly with Bing Maps or you're going to stream video all day long, well, then you might not make it through the day, but otherwise, shouldn't be a problem. So that's the Nokia Lumia 710. It's going to be available January 11th, 2012 on T-Mobile for $49.99 with a two-year contract. And for that price, it's a really nice phone. Heck, it was $99. Bucks. To be honest, I would still say this is a pretty nice phone. If you're looking for a pocketable phone with a 3.7 inch display and you want to try out a smartphone OS or you're a little tired of iOS or you find Android a little bit too boggling or laggy or something like that, well, this is definitely worth checking out. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.